G'day. After making up my six position stop the other day, I thought, well, actually, you probably want to see how it works because there are a couple of tricks to that. So this particular video, um, that's what I'm going to be doing. I've got a made up part and uh, I'm just going to be um, setting up to make that. Uh, probably only make one or two, but just enough so you can get the idea of to how these things work and, and what you can do with them. One of the first things I've got to do before I can use my uh, stop in anger is, is actually modify the ends of the bolts. You may or may not be able to see there, the end of that bolt is actually slightly cupped and the reason for that is that these days bolts are made by rolling the threads on. Uh, it gives you a, a stronger thread so there's nothing, nothing wrong with it, uh, but it will distort the ends there and so what I just need to do is, is come in there and flatten that off. Uh, and that's that's not a complex job. Uh, I'm going to use a collet chuck simply because I don't like holding threaded items in a in a three jaw or something like that. Um, here you've got even pressure and 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 you're less likely to distort threads, and you're also less likely to to wind it out of the um, the chuck too. This is the part that uh, I'm going to make. It's nothing special. Uh, if you want to think of it as a, a modern chest piece or something like that you can um, but it's basically it's a cylindrical section I've got a rounded end there I've got an undercut here and I've got an angle here and this will demonstrate I think to how the how it's all done now one of the important things to realize is you've only got six stops here so um, barring perhaps putting a, a hole through the middle with the tailstock uh, you have to be, think carefully about how you're going to do this and so to reduce this diameter uh, I've actually got a tool with a with a, a, a chamfer on the end there, which will do both of those, right? Um, and here I've got to work out a way of, of stopping that. Well, I know how I'm going to do that, but um, you know, getting the the length because everything is is uh, basically uh, the whole whole stop thing is predicated on this being in a repeatable position. So, just something to think about. Now, key to this is actually a table. You have six stops to do this and one of them is going to be taken up with setting to length and the other one is going to be another one is going to be taken up with parting off and so you've really got four stops to do your your bits and pieces so um, it's a matter of thinking a bit juggling what you're going to do and how you're going to get about doing it so the first thing here is I'm going to take this to diameter 14 okay so coming in there to do that. Then I'm going to put my radius on, so that bit on the end there, and then I'm going to put this, um, what would you call it, reduced diameter in here, so that's going to be reduced diameter start and reduced diameter stop. And normally I'd do this on a bit of paper, so you know, and have it sitting up by the lathe. The cross side leading here is, is so that I can wind the cross slide into a particular reading. Um, doesn't matter what it is, I'll probably zero it on something like the, the stock size or something like that um, and you know do that. The speed is if I, if I need to change speed, so if I have to do something like um, you know, I'm doing a very tiny diameter versus a very large diameter on a part, I might want to change the speed so I can put a note of the speed. But what I'm going to be doing then is going through with my stop and saying, right, position one, I'm setting to length, right? And so I'll also have uh, bits of tape or something on my tool holders with a number on it. So I can say, right, this is the tool I use for op one, okay? So for op one, I'll put in this particular tool. Um, for setting the length, the cross slide measurement doesn't matter, but uh, for this one, for example, getting into diameter 14, there'll be a, a particular diameter I need for that. And so that might be, uh, you know, one, two, three thou. And that'll do that for me, right? Um, and then, you know, goes on. Um, so I'll, I'll, you know, set up a part, run through this, and uh, then we'll try producing another part. So the first thing I'm doing is actually cheating well in terms of using the six stops the OD of my part is 18 and this is a bit of 20 millimeter stock so what I'm going to do is by removing the um, indicator I actually get a little bit more travel here and so I'm going to use that to turn this down to 18 now 
as I was saying earlier, I've labeled this, this is, this is number one, because what I'm going to do once I've done that, is wind that forward until I get to the flat behind the, the cutting point, and use that to set up my length. Okay, so I'll set up the, the stop here with the dial indicator, say right, that is my, my stopping point. And so when I come to do the next part, I just need to position this to this particular point. I can then move the, the, the material forward in the chuck and everything, fingers crossed, will be all right. Now I'm using the collet chuck here um, for a couple of reasons. One is that I like it. Uh, another one is that it hasn't got the, the jaws which might catch on things, which I'm keen not to do. Um, but the other one is it's a good repeatable way of getting the uh, material centered without having to worry about dialing things in. You find that most multi-operation machines will use something like a collet chuck to position the material. It might be a C5, it might be uh, uh, something like this, but that's, that's what you'll do. A couple of things to note here. First of all, my order of operations has actually changed. Instead of going 1, 2, 3, it's now 1, 3, 2. And that was simply because this particular stop was uh, hitting here. So I've had to choose where my depth stops go. And so I, I now go from here, from setting up the material length, to here for running down that uh, outside diameter, and then to here for putting the radii on. Now the other thing about the radii is this. I've got my tool ground like this, and that means I can have it set up that way and put a, a radius on like that, but I can also, if I turn it around the holder, bring it in and put a radius on something on here. Um, now if you ground it so that you had a, a, a radius on that side, you could do that one by coming in like that, but if you wanted to do the inside radius, you'd be in strife. So that's just a little tip about ground, grinding radii tools. Now the other thing too that I, I will mention while I'm here is that a quick change tool post is a quick change tool post. It's, it's called that for a reason. You don't want to be stuffing around with setting up uh, lengths or height. I'm going to be setting up here with one holder, holder um, per operation. I mean, if I can use the same tool for two, then I'll use the same tool for two. But uh, that's, that's how I'm going to be doing this. And I guess the other thing is if, if I need a chamfer or something like that, as I showed with this particular tool here, I've ground that on the tool, so I don't have to worry about changing the angle of the tool post. Uh, it annoys me greatly when I see people, you know, putting extra handers on here so they can turn the tool post around, because as soon as you do that, you lose the advantage of that quick change bit, right? Because every time you swivel that thing around, you've got to uh, realign it and all that sort of thing. Whereas I can leave this sitting here like this, and I've actually got this pinned to the, the T-nut down here. Uh, and if I need an angle like that, the chances are I'll grind it. That's not to say I don't move this tool post occasionally, but it's very rare that I do. And when I do, I'm usually kicking myself because I didn't think about this beforehand. Here it is, my completed table. Um, I've had to reverse a couple of things here, because otherwise the, uh, the stops interfere with each other. But apart from that, uh, everything uh, is, is all right. If I had a slimmer dial, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have to do half of that either. But uh, so that's that's basically the order of operation. So I go to stop one, then three, then two, then five, then four, then six. Um, that controls the length of the uh, carriage, and then I'm winding in to these measurements. Uh, this one here is for the groove, and so I'm actually starting here, and then plunging in as I move along until I, I get to that, that stop there. And that's my, what would you call it, first off, set up part, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's pretty much two drawing. Uh, there's a nub on the back there that needs to come off, but that's um, that, that can be a, a secondary sort of uh, operation. Uh, I have heard people talk about putting a slight angle on their parting tool. Um, the only trouble I have with that is that it tends to make the, the parting tool sort of skew off, so I'm not a big fan of that one. But um, that will, will do it. Uh, I had to swap a few tools around to, uh, to get things in the right spot uh, so they didn't interfere, but apart from that, we're, we're good. So uh, now we'll try making one of these things simply by following the steps on the board and seeing whether it actually, uh, well, works.
So there are my two parts, um, except for that little nub on the top there, which looks like it's just a burr that's, that the tool has kicked up. They are pretty much identical. Um, so I'm, I'm quite pleased with that and, and uh, you know, when I have the opportunity to use this, uh, this uh, stop in anger, uh, it'll, it, it should do a good job. I've used a, I used a, uh, a setting on here for the, the, the length stop uh, going into the side of the tool. But the other thing you could also use is your tail stock if you're short of um, space. It just means you, you've got to lock your tail stock and, and have the, the ram out to a set position. Uh, the other thing you could do is if you have facility for mounting a, a rear tool post, uh, you could also use that. It depends on how you want to do all this sort of stuff. It's 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 really up to you. But with the the six stops here, uh, it it does give you uh, you know some flexibility to uh, to rip through the parts. I mean, as you as you saw, uh, it didn't take me very long to produce this uh, the second part. Um, and if I wanted to produce you know a dozen or so like it. Um, it, it wouldn't take much longer at all. Uh, I did have to do two passes along this diameter here, but that's not a major deal. Um, you know, the depth of cut was just a little bit too much for, for the tool. Um, yeah, there you go. Pleased with that. Thanks for watching. Please share and uh, we'll see you for the next one.